Well, hello, boys and girls. Here we are when we feel like at o'clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and this is Joe Bork, and we are part of my NHL Pearls of Wisdom and many other things as well. Um, but uh, today, I know you've all been on the edge of your seats, like, where's Pearl's picks? I'm like, I've been like crazy busy. You know what's going on now with the. Uh, we, we've been doing series picks, we've been doing lottery stuff, we've been doing all kinds of stuff, and uh, honestly, I have a lot of, um, most of these picks today I, I'm giving to my client, so I really would only have lean, so I thought, Joe, Joe can do his picks, and who he thinks he might win these games, and my clients can just work with that, and uh, my picks, so I thought that'd be a good idea, not to mention, I just want to find an excuse to work with Mr. Joe Bork, because he's awesome. Uh, okay, well, Joe, um, let's get right into the game, shall we? We, uh, sure. we, uh, we, we've been, you've been looking at our, uh, series picks, just go into my, just scroll into my list there. We have, we did series picks for a few teams already, and we're going to be doing some more this evening. Uh, that's fun for all of us, but let's look at, to me, the one that's going to be coming on not too long from now, actually, but the Columbus Blue Jackets and the Tampa Bay Lightning might be the most interesting game and maybe the most interesting series. Uh, what, uh, what, do you, what do you think about this game? Who do you think has the advantage going into this one? Well, I think Tampa obviously coming into the Philly game 2-0, and both of those teams were playing, and Tampa also didn't have their whole team. They had Steven Stamkos out for a while now, and now we don't know. Uh, I believe Victor's out game one, right? I don't think yeah. he's going to be in. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be in any time in the very soon. I mean, he's day-to-day, -day, but, I mean, do we know if that's day? Like, everybody's kind of labeled day-to-day -day nowadays. Like, how he slammed his stick along the boards when he was going down the tunnel didn't make that seem like a day-to-day -day thing, but oh, I could be wrong. Victor Hedman, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It didn't look good. Yeah, I don't think you sl you break your stick against the sidewall if you think you're out for a day or two. And from what I uh -huh. understand, Stamkos isn't going to be ready either. No, which is that's – but Stamkos, Stammer, someone they've been so used to playing without at this point that it's a great addition to have, obviously, and he's going to help you. But Hedman's a big loss because you have a, such a young defense and you don't have the biggest uh, experienced defense. Also, a guy that's tall, like six seven, like him, and that can move like him skate well play offense has that well he's just one of the best if not the best in the league so uh that's a huge loss but like i said they have defensive depth they're bringing somebody for a game or two normally they figured it out tampa i think because of the depth they added they will be able to still win the first game and i think that'll get them started um in good success in this series because they match up a little bit better, adding some of that grit, like we talked about in Coleman and others in our previous video. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I can't get my pick here, but uh, Victor Hedman being out is quite the loss. Uh, it's going to be a, a lot of pressure on McDonough, who um, honestly has seemed to slip the last two years. It's like he's been on a downhill projection a little bit. Um, I don't, has he ever been as good as he was as a Ranger uh, in Tampa? He's always been good. He's never been as gaudy stats-wise, I think, as he was as a Ranger. But I think it also has to do with difference of scheme a little bit. They wanted him to do too – not too much, but they wanted him to kind of be the dude that did everything in New York at time. Where in Tampa, you don't need, obviously, McDonough to be the guy that does everything. You have Victor Hedman. So and Now maybe more so you do. Yeah, so now you do. Yeah. Now it's going to be a challenge to see if he's going to be able to take on that role and a bigger role for Kevin Shattenkirk. And you mentioned Braden Coburn the other day, where they you say you have, you know, a little more a physical jack. aspect. But Braden cool. Coburn's really not as physical as a guy his size should be. He, no. he skates well and he's big. Um, it gets a little thin. Although I love Mikhail Sergachev, and that's going to be the thing. What can Sergachev do now? This is his time to shine, I think, for sure. Who is going to pick it? Who's who's going to win this game? I mean, Columbus is Columbus. You know, they will play their their squirrely little game and weaselly little game. Is like people they they'll 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 try to slow down the game and ice the puck when things get too fast and all the kinds of stuff that they do. The Tampa Bay had a hard time with 
the last time this these two met. So I'm uh, we'll, but we'll take your pick and we'll go with that. You're staying Tampa Bay in this in the first game, anyways. Yeah. So now to the next game, we have uh, Calgary Flames versus the Dallas Stars. Um, who, who the Dallas Stars did happen to win one at the end of the round robin, and uh, the Calgary Flames um, did well to beat Winnipeg. But it's kind of hard to judge with what the injuries that Winnipeg had, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think Calgary, Jeff Ward made them look really good. Uh, we talked about Bennett in the previous video. Uh, he's just a guy that goes from being here to here when the postseason hits. So the they're a team that's going to be tough. I do think Dallas is a team that took a couple tough losses. Uh, they didn't look great as a whole, but Bishop didn't look bad. He's coming back. Hudobin looked good in the game that they just couldn't do anything in front of him. I mean, he was laying on his back, it seemed, every two minutes. Um, so, I mean, you can't do much there as a goaltender when you're laying on your back every two minutes. So, I think they're going to bounce back. I think they got a good matchup because of what we just, what you kind of just said. We, had, we didn't really get to see fully what Calgary is because Winnipeg had so much happen, losing two of their key factors in their lineup, obviously and already not having the best defense. Adding Sherratt was huge for a playoff run to have three guys rather than two. Uh, but it still didn't help to the magnitude I thought it would for them, and they ended up losing the series to Calgary. But I still think Calgary's going to be outmatched by Dallas. Um, it's going to be interesting in game one, though, because they're probably going to have Hudobin over uh, Ben Bishop because Bishop's likely to be out. I would still say Dallas will probably winning game one just because Dallas has played. I also think that might benefit them because they're going to be playing in front of their backup, even though he's played great, how well they played in front of him this year, how they've been off in the round robin a bit might actually help them to snap their heads back straight in game one. And then if Bishop, well, as soon as Bishop's back in, they'll just be like, okay, cool. Like that might actually be a good reset for them because how well they play in front of Hudobin along with Ben Bishop, they're a team that doesn't really play worse in front of either goalie. Sometimes they actually probably play better in front of Hudobin like you saw them trying to die for pucks the other day. They just didn't look good defensive scheme-wise in that game. So I would still say Dallas because they have one of the best goalie tandems in hockey and Hudobin is one of the best, like you say, leaders in the locker room too. I watched his whole interview afterward. Um He's a guy you don't normally give the goalies this anymore, but if you did, you probably could give him an A as a goalie because he's that talkative. It's like, yeah, I believe the team did this. We did this. We need to improve on this. He doesn't talk like a goaltender. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did mention that To go off the point a little bit, my, um, uh, in the West, as you know, I'm an Oilers fan, and I'm really I, – I know you're listening, uh, Kenny Holland, because you listen to all my videos, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Hudobin, my friend. That's all I got to say. Now you've been told. If you were scratching your head and wondering what to do, now you know what to do. I would love to see Hudobin come in, in Edmonton and uh, give uh, Koskin and maybe a little bit of uh, like that kind of veteran leadership might help them. I think Koskin has got the tools, but his mental state. As far as the pick here is uh, is concerned, like I said, I these I, I have all these picks for my for my uh, clients, so I can't really say, but. Um, I will say that it's. I I will like to say that I'm really rooting for Talbot to tell you the honest truth. I'm not a Calgary Flames fan necessarily, but I think Talbot's had a tough career. He had a lot of uh, like you mentioned. I don't know if we mentioned it on the video or not. He played like 72 games as an Oiler, and yeah, um, when he first came out, he looked like he was going to be a great goaltender. He happened to play for an Edmonton Oilers team that had a porous defense. I think it affected his confidence. And I'm really actually kind of rooting for him to have a good rest of his career. Maybe not for the Calgary Flames, though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Carolina Hurricanes and Boston Bruins. This is probably going to be my favorite one to watch. Uh, first game should be interesting. What are, you, what, are you, what are you looking at here? Yeah, uh, game one is going to be interesting. I do think Carolina has been the trendsetter kind of the uh, in the qualifying round, I should say. The trendsetters of this playoffs a little bit just coming in and setting the tone and saying, oh, nope, 
Everybody thought New York was a good team. Now they have the first overall picks to be significantly better. But everybody thought New York was a good team coming into this playoffs as a lower rank seed. That's not true. We're just going to dismantle New York. So um, that uh, that goes to show that Boston's struggling still. I think they're get game one. And we already talked about this. Check out our series video. This is one of the most fun series to talk about in that series video as well between the Bruins and Carolina. But Rob Brindamore, I kind of took away my pick a little bit and doubted it when Dougie was out. I'm not doubting it anymore. I did think this guy's a younger version of Tortorella at this point. It's just, here's the button I need to push. And I think he's one of those guys that literally, like Torch, probably sits in front of a screen for 17 hours when he has to. And just goes, you slot here, you slot here, you slot here, you slot here. And that's how we be. And then by the time he gets into the game, he just has everything in his head. And it's like, hey, I need you to switch to this line. And even without no explanation, the players are fine with it because they're like, okay, he must have a good reason for that. Like, that's why coaches that you know players don't make an issue if they say we need you to go with this guy now, that's when you know they're a great coach because players just go, okay, he didn't really tell me why I'm switching lines, but I know it's going to be for a good reason. That's the same in Philly. That's the same in Columbus. And that's typically the same uh, with Peter DeBoer-led teams. I'm assuming it's the same in uh, Vegas. So. Yeah, Doug, you just mentioned some great coaches there. And absolutely, gaining trust of your the intelligence you have for the game is like one of the most important parts of coaching. And it seems like Brendan Moore has like reached a new plateau in these playoffs that way. Uh, I, I agree about that. Um, I, I, I have, like I said, I have a pick here, but we already talked about it in the series. But one thing I just do, I can't say enough, is how much Brendan Moore really impressed me with the system he had in place and how he had those guys moving the team itself nobody questioned really um we did question goaltending but it appears he did a tortorella like thing in with uh how the defense and the team itself kind of worked to not expose Mrazek's weakness which is that he is too overly aggressive that they can't seem to get any him out of that it didn't work in detroit it hasn't worked anywhere he's gone. He just does it. He's just going to be that, and that's it, it seems. So yeah. Peter Moore says, oh, okay, we're going to play this system and let him be aggressive then and just forget exactly. it. Exactly. I think uh, another team, we've seen teams figure out how to do that with Mike Smith throughout his entire career because he's a good goalie, but he's a guy that will never hone it back. He never, yeah. no matter what teams he's on, he said, no, nah, I play the puck. I'm going to play the puck when I want to play the puck. And that's what's going to happen, basically. So yeah. you have to find the right system to play for Smith. And it always works. So not always. It usually works when you have the right coaching. So it's kind of you have the right coaching and it works with Mirazic. It's all about finding the right two-person combination sometimes. Yeah. Well, I mean, about uh, aggressive, though, there's that. Right. But also uh, just coming out of the net to uh take out the shot yeah Mraz that just comes r- like he's he, all you got to do is go side to side on him and that's, that's what i'm kind of worried about with boston with that top line they can do circles around him. so uh i'm going to be interested to see how brindamore works that system but from what i saw yeah. it looks like they're going to be able to do it that's true. That reminds me of Yari Halak before we move on to the last game when he tried to come out on Richie in that one playoff series and he came all the way out of the net when he was on Montreal and Richard just chipped it around him and then had an empty net goal basically in the postseason. <laughs> yeah, that's funny we mentioned that, 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 that famous game where the Zamboni driver uh, won for Carolina over Toronto. Mrazic got hurt by doing that very same thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's go to the next one, the last game of the night. Um, Chicago Blackhawks versus the Vegas Golden Knights. And uh, um, uh, again, as an Edmonton Oilers fan, uh, and pretty much everybody I heard, but there were a couple of people that were saying watch out for Chicago, and I, I can understand the watch out for Chicago. However, this series and this game, especially this game. We already talked about the series, but this game, is this momentum for Chicago going to get them at least the first game you figure or what? It depends because the momentum for Vegas isn't really faltering either. I mean, we talked about how having the qualifying round should give you more fire in your belly, but the way Vegas was playing was not, oh, let's just 
figure things out in this qualifying round. Like they came back and they, they showed fight and tenacity in a game. That game Flurry was in, it looked like the team basically said, no, we're not losing you this game. We played like crap to start the game. We're coming back and we're making sure you do not get a loss in this game. That, like that's that's what that showed to me. It showed a great bounce back. I feel like even if they were to say go down two nothing to Chicago because of their momentum from the first series in the first period, Vegas's bounce back has shown me they would probably still win the game because then Chicago, when their lines get going a million miles a minute, three deep and even four deep compared to Chicago, they're going to have to keep pace with that, and that's what I worry with the Blackhawks against the Vegas Golden Knights. I don't think this is a good matchup for them. And I also have Leonard starting the night, which is the right decision in my eyes. I think he's going to take off. And if he doesn't, you have a Hall of Fame goalie to fall back on. So you don't have a bad fallback option there. Yeah. Pretty nice luxury to have. Yeah. What, is, what does Chicago have? Not a Hall of Fame goalie. No, Chicago has Malcolm Subban to fall back on. <laughs> Subban, the Hall of Shame goaltender, probably. All right. Well, yes, um, that's interesting. Um Thank you for for doing this for me. I, I hope maybe we can keep on trying to do this again. I like this idea. It's a lot of fun. And that's what we do here at Pearls of Wisdom Industries. We have fun and frolic and enjoy every day. Enjoy the games uh, uh, and enjoy good hockey talk. Get down there in the comment section. Tell us what you think about what we're saying. And don't be afraid. I'm a big boy. I can uh, I can handle it. We just had a guy from the Rangers come and just give me a shellac because of what I said about not wanting the Rangers to get the lottery, uh, win the lottery. And you know what? I like that shit. Come and slap <laughs> me around. I'm fine. <laughs> I played the game. It's what I love doing. So go do it. Or just be nice. You can do that too. You, you can go sit, you can go, you can go Sedine on me. That's fine too. <laughs> well, Joe, what, what are you doing now? You got, you got other stuff going on too, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I've been putting videos up on our Sports Fanatic News YouTube page that Andrew and I do, which is spelled with a P for Philly. So it's P-H-A-N-A-T-I-C. So for people like the Philly Fanatic, not the F. So and then uh, True Philadelphia Sportscast, all our podcasts are on our YouTube, plus Spotify, Radio Public and where you get your podcast. And I'm always on now as a regular member of Peerless Fine Peerless of Wisdom, which is wonderful, as well as writing for hockey and baseball for OT Heroics and Pub Sports Radio. So um, I love joining your show. Can't wait to stay tuned for some of our series predictions later with Steel Flyers probably coming out uh, sometime late tonight, I would say, right? Oh, yeah. Steel Flyers. Yeah. Uh, check it out. I, I want, uh, I, I'm going to go get the link, actually, and put it down in the comments. You got to check that website out. It's pretty fantastic. He did a great job on that. And you can find us on there. Uh, you can find him on there, his podcast. And there's going to be a lot of great stuff from what I hear. He, he's actually been kind of inkling at a few things he's going to do, but he hasn't actually told me what the hell yet. I'm pretty excited to find out, and I'm sure you are too. I told you that uh, I can't give you the picks here because I have clients. You can be one too. If you go over to uh, pay, uh, my uh, Patreon, get BPAL picks. Um, also, if I get five picks this, or five subscribers on my Patreon this week, I'll start giving free picks for a week. So go check uh, check out that. See what it's all about. People making lots of money, but more importantly, we have lots of fun over there. And uh, you can look at our BPAL picks on YouTube as well. That's my full 42, and I think it's Borch too. He's a busy guy. I got lots of stuff to do, and the game's going to be starting right away. I want to yeah. watch it. <laughs> have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you. Enjoy the hockey.